I begin by praising Allah, our Lord, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, and by seeking His mercy and the blessings to be with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the seal of that long chain of prophets and messengers sent by Allah for the guidance of man. And I greet you, dear audience, in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. In Islam, we believe that Allah, all glory be to him, has taught Adam on the moment of his creation a lot of knowledge. The Quran reads, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا And he, Allah, has taught Adam the names of everything. This, of course, included the answer to the basic questions, who am I, who has created me and sent me into this world, what's my message in it, how can I fulfill that message to the best of my abilities, and what's for me after this world. Because of this, Allah has ordered the angels to prostrate in front of Adam, not as an act of worship, but as an act of respect. Respect due to the knowledge Allah has bestowed upon Adam. Because of this, man has been considered the most highly honored amidst all the creation of Allah. All glory be to him. The Quran reads, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمُ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Verily, we have honored the children of Adam. And we have carried them in land and on the sea. And have bestowed many of our bounties upon them. And we have raised them above many of our creation. So one of the reasons of honoring man and honoring the descendants of Adam, may Allah be pleased with him, is their capacity to gain knowledge. And Allah in the Quran has emphasized the fact that knowledge is a must to raise man to this status of honor. And the Quran reads, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Verily, those who can heed Allah the best are those who are knowledgeable, those who know. And the Quran also joins in the same sentence, the same phrase, the same ayah. Allah with his angels and with the knowledgeable ones. شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأول العلم قائمة بالقصد. Allah has made witness that there is no deity except him, or glory be to him. And so did his angels and the ones who are learned amidst the human race. So really knowledge is extremely important for raising man to the status of honor. Allah has risen him up to it. Because of this, education is a must in the life of a Muslim. A Muslim cannot be an ignorant being. He has to be well educated. And uh, to gain education, it has to be from its two main sources. Education from within the revealed knowledge, as well as education from within the acquired knowledge. So any of these two branches of human knowledge is not enough to make man stand at the honored status Allah has placed him at. Recently, most educationalists have complained that the world is passing by an educational crisis. And they say this crisis is more severe than any food crisis or any war crisis or any other of the many crises of our time. And sadly enough, they stem from the materialistic attitude of the present civilization by saying the crisis is mainly embodied in the form of the steadily increasing number of unlettered adults, males and females. And they try to frame work or uh, to frame this crisis 
in terms of its material dimensions alone. They say that third world countries cannot keep pace opening schools and educational institutions that would encompass the increasing number of born children in their societies. And as a result, the number of unlettered adults is steadily increasing in the world. Yet more rational ones would figure the crisis in different dimensions. That education has been mainly limited to the material sides of it, passing knowledge, attending examinations, without teaching the educated who they are, who has created them and sent them into this world, what's their message in it, how can they fulfill that message to the best of their abilities, and what's for them after this life. Because of this, we produce educated people that may be technically very skilled and may be, as far as information would go, may be very well learned, but without training them according to the divine guidance, they can never be good vicegerents on earth. Most educational institutions say that we try to produce a good citizen, not a good human being. A good citizen may be somebody who is capable of uh, acquiring a good job, producing a good product, uh, gaining his life livelihood in a nice manner, living peacefully in his society. These are the parameters of a good citizen. But Islam invites for the production of a good human being. And there is a great difference between a good citizen and a good human being. We have very many good citizens in the world today, yet the world is not at peace with each other. The world is living many, many crises simply because we produce learned people, but we do not produce good human beings. The lack in the process of training, the lack of the process of upbringing, has increased the number of the learned people. And many good educationalists claim today that if you educate without proper upbringing, you are giving man many tools to be more wicked to be more corrupt, to be more destructive than leaving them ignorant. I recall one of the very well-known educationalists in France, a man who occupied the position of the Minister of Education for 12 years, Edger Four, his name is, and as he came out from the cabinet, he said, close all the educational institutions. Shut down all your schools and your institutes and your universities. And when he was asked why, he said, education without proper upbringing can produce more wicked people, can produce people who can play around with their knowledge to deceive others, to cheat others, to make the society more corrupt in a more intelligent manner. So the cry today is not to educate, is to properly upbring your youngsters. To not only educate them, but properly upbringing them. And I can properly upbring a youngster, a boy or a girl, if I can educate him or her properly according to the main lines that can make out of him a proper human being. And a proper human being is a human being who believes in the Creator, who believes in the fact that he has or she has to be committed to their Creator in obedience, who keep observing that the Creator is overlooking him, is recording every action he takes, every word he utters, every penny he earns and spends, every effort he exerts. Unless I educate my youngsters along these lines, 
I cannot produce a good human being. A good human being has to be well aware of who he is, who has created him and brought him into this world, what's his or her message in this world, how can he or she fulfill that message to the best of their abilities, and what's for he or she after this world. These questions crop up in the memories of every human being, young or old, educated or uneducated, uh, wealthy or poor, higher in the status of the society or lower in the status of the society. And without giving the, the person the clear answers to these basic questions, he can never uh, live happily on the surface of that planet, nor can play his or her role successfully on the surface of that planet. Because of this, we can see clearly that education in the present materialistic civilization has done more harm than good, despite the great advances in the area of science and technology, despite the many discoveries and the many technologies man has advanced, yet all these discoveries and all these technologies have made man more miserable, more unhappy, more insecure, and more unsafe. We'll have a short break, and I'll come back to you, inshallah, to continue this discussion. Welcome back, dear viewers. We were discussing the current educational crisis, and we were trying to sum up the fact that this crisis is not purely a material one, it is more of a spiritual and moral one than being a material one. Racial discrimination, waging wars against each other, trying to exploit the needy and the poor, trying to be unfair in dealings with each other, are only a minor aspect or a minor signs of the failure of the present-day systems of education. Wars going around the world are mainly waged at the hands of highly educated people, but they were not brought up to be good human beings. To be a good human being, you have to know who you are, who has created you and sent you into this world, what's your message in it, how can you fulfill that message to the best of your abilities, and what's for you after this life. To be a good human being, you have to have a profession in which you can excel and which you can carry out honestly and sincerely and energetically to produce the best out of yourself. So we need an educational system that can teach man these basic principles, not just allow him to focus on the certificate, education for certification or education for acquiring a higher status in the society, or education to produce a better citizen. We need an educational system that can produce a good human being, a human being who understands his real message on earth, being a vicegerent on that planet, entrusted by worshiping your creator in the way he has prescribed, and doing your best to make life on the surface of that planet as happy, as uh, pleasant, as easy, as comfortable as possible. Because you will be held responsible and accountable for every minute you spend on the surface of that planet. The only system of education that can give this guidance is the, the Islamic system of education. And by this definition, the Islamic system of education, we don't mean to increase the classes on Islam or the amount of knowledge on the Islamic teachings, but we would like to bring up a youngster, a boy or a girl, according to the Islamic principles, make our students be aware of the observance of Allah above every one of them, whether he is in the midst of the night, all alone by himself or herself, or during the brightest of the days, amidst millions of people, Allah is watching over you. And this observance of Allah's watch is the best way of bringing the best of qualities in an educated boy or girl. 
So we need a system of education that would enhance the physique of the boy or the girl, that would enhance the knowledge, that would give each one of them the suitable education that can bring up a better human being out of himself or herself. We need a balanced system of education that can make the person aware of his responsibilities or her responsibilities on the surface of that planet because the current educational system has been highly commercialized, has been highly materialized, has been highly exploiting a way of life rather than a giving way of life, an enrichment of life. So we need to Islamize education and to save humanity from the purely materialistic attitudes our youngsters are growing up under it these days, making the young man or the young girl aware of who he is or she is, what's his or her message in life, how can each of them fulfill that message to the best of their abilities and what's for them after this life. And to achieve that, you have to be both physically strong, both mentally uh, very active, educationally uh, very successful, and uh, morally and spiritually at the a climax that can never be reached within the material system of education which is governing the world today. The system has been highly commercialized, highly materialized, highly inhumanized to the extent that most of the rulers of the world today have no clear understanding of their message in life and that's why they have imposing lots of injustices, imposing lots of wars, imposing lots of bloodshed, lots of exploitation unduly. So we need to reconsider our system of education and make the main objective of the educational system is to produce a good human being, someone who realizes the true message of man on earth, how he can fulfill that message to the best of his or her abilities and what's for him or for her after this life. Unless we do this, humanity will go on suffering from the many injustices of our time, the many selfishness of many of the rulers, the many aggressions that are taking place in different parts of the world, the many injustices in many of the cases that uh, are currently exposed to the eyes and the observation of people of our time. If we look to the world, we are living in a very unhappy world. It's a world at a complete unrest, a world that is facing more dangers by piling up weapons of mass destruction, by piling up highly advanced technologies, by piling up weapons that can finish that globe in no time. And at the same time, we never uh, give the educated or the ones to be educated enough moral understanding, uh, enough spiritual understanding, or an enough real understanding of the human message on earth. Man is not here to oppress each other. Man is not here to exploit each other. Man is not here to wage wars against each other. Man is a vicegerent on earth, entrusted with that planet, asked to play his or her role on the surface of that planet in the span of life Allah has given him or her as justly as he or she can, as fairly as he or she can, as honestly as he or she can, and then consider what's after this life. There will be death, there will be burial in a grave, there will be accountability in the grave. The grave can be either a piece of paradise or a piece of hellfire. Then there will be the destruction of this world and resurrection after death accountability, judgment, and eternity in life to come, either in paradise forever or in hell forever. We need people who can count their own deeds before they are counted for him or for her. We need people who 
inspect their own actions and their own behaviors before they are being inspected for them. We need people who judge their existence on the surface of that planet before being judged on Akhirah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, the two feet of a human being will not be moved on the day of judgment until the person, man or woman, has been asked about four basic questions. عن عمره فيما أفناه His age, how did he spend, how did he use or misuse. وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه His youthfulness, how did he use or misuse. عن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه His wealth, how did he earn or uh, and spend. وعن علمه فيما أفاد به And his knowledge, how did he benefit or harm humanity with. Many of the leading personalities in the world today do not have that knowledge at all. And that's why the world is suffering from the guidance of ignorant people. People who have not been taught properly who they are, who has created them and sent them into this world. What's their message in it? How can they fulfill that message to the best of their abilities? And what's for them after this life? We need to reconsider our systems of education to produce good human beings who understand their message in life fully and can plan and can act accordingly so that people can judge themselves before being judged and assess their deeds for they being assessed for themselves. And because of this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, has taught us and warned us that every action you take, every word you utter, every decision you make, every effort you exert is recorded and you will be held responsible for all your span of life from the age of reasoning until the moment of your death. So life is a great responsibility which has to be taken seriously. It's not for enjoyment alone, although halal enjoyment is not forbidden. Allowed enjoyment is not forbidden in Islam. But life is not only for enjoyment. It's a great responsibility that has to be taken seriously so that one would pass his existence in this life successfully with the acceptance of his creator. And uh, until another episode, we'll continue with discussing scientific notions in the Quran. And until we meet again, I leave you in peace with our respectful salutation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. Oh.